So good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Christine Hall, and I'm the founder of The Mop, Mississauga Area Women in Business. And tonight we have the pleasure of having Marta Andrade, the creative conductor with ELS11, um, on our uh, call, uh, facilitating the session called Become Brand Brilliant. And as I was saying before we recorded, um, Marta was actually going to be presenting this um, workshop in person, a live workshop at our May retreat. We had planned uh, a retreat up in the Muskoka area. And so uh, I asked her, you know, it was such a great topic and everyone was interested in it. And I don't think no matter how uh, seasoned or how far you are in your cycle as an entrepreneur, branding, it never hurts because you're evolving. And so it's always really great. I'm sure Marta will speak to this to just constantly looking at who you are, your voice, your tone, what you represent and updating it, keeping it up to date. So i um, super excited about tonight. And I just wanted to le uh, read a little bit about uh, Marta to you. And I'm actually taking this from her website and um, she describes herself as the creative conductor. Uh, Marta was born, um, uh, as a creative, and she describes herself, or her first word, which was Crayola, which I thought was so cute. Um, graphic design is in her blood, I guess. It was her first love and has been her only career. Um, she's the proud mompreneur um, of two young, beautiful kiddos who she has been uh, working with diligently, homeschooling like the rest of us, uh, during this uh, period of, of uh containment or a confinement. <laughs> um, she does run a boutique graphic design agency. Um, and I will ask her to share how she determined her um, company name because it's a great, a great little story there. I'm sure that's wrapped up in her presentation. She's been in her graphic design career for over 25 years now. So she started when she was about four, right, Marta? <laughs> right. Thanks, Christine. <laughs> Okay, so let me just tell you a little bit more. She's worked with many areas of the creative design world, including um, Bermuda as a creative director and uh, a leading advertise agency called Aardvark uh, in Canada. She's worked as an art director for Shoppers Drug Mart and as a creative director for Transcontinental Printing, one of Canada's largest printers. And uh, she started this company, uh, L7. Did I say L11 earlier? That's okay. That's Don't worry okay. about that. Sorry. Um, you know why? It's because of those two. The elves. Yeah. We'll be yeah. talking about that. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, in 2010, and um, she's had a very rewarding career and uh, helped so many entrepreneurs. And we're going to hear more about that today. So if you wouldn't mind uh, taking over now, I am going to make you, Marta with two A's, the host. And then you can share more about your career, what you do, how you help others, and we can go ahead and get started. So making you the host now. Did that work okay? I'm not sure. I'm gonna see if you can see what I'm doing and you tell me, Christine. Absolutely, top tips, brand brilliance, I okay, think. Perfect, let's break this so that everyone can see it better. So good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your, I'm sure, busy schedules. For me, it seems like being home is busier than being at work. So again, thank you for taking the time. I know we're only together for the next about 50 minutes. So I'm going to dive right in. I'm going to uh, give you seven tips. Of course, there had to be seven. And hopefully when we wrap this up, there'll be some uh, time for Q&A and hopefully you'll be feeling a little more brand brilliant by the time we get to, to the end. So let's get started. So thank you, Christine, for that um, host description. I don't have to go through that. But I did want to share a little bit about what you should expect from this workshop. So one of the uh, top things is to articulate your brand in three words. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep, yeah, okay. I have so, a quick question. Can you all still see her PowerPoint slides? Okay, I can't see it either. Sorry, um, thought I'd let you know that in case you're, you're describing something. Can I you, am. Yeah, it's just a black screen now. Very strange. Okay, so it's, uh, it says my sharing has been paused. Bring your, okay, let's see. Is that helping? No. Your sharing has been paused. Okay, no, let me see if I accidentally did something. I don't. Okay. So, but you never know if I accidentally, um, no, it still looks like you're the host. 
you are screen sharing. Could you do me a favor and stop the screen share and then restart sure. it? I will. Okay, here we go. Can you see it now? Uh, not yet. Okay, I have the green light that I'm sharing. Yes, thumbs up. Okay, let's try again. Okay. Still sharing, I see the green light. I'm gonna keep watching for my green light. Okay, there we go, I can multitask. We can do this, right women? This is what we do, all right. So the first thing um, I wanted to, to sort of give you the goal of what you can expect out of this workshop, as I was starting to tell you, you we wanna come out of this workshop being able to uh, actually describe our brand in three words. And that was a little exercise that you have hopefully had time to do at home. If you haven't, don't sweat it. We're here together. We can um, definitely pick on a couple of people, voluntold a couple of people and see what they came up with. Um, it, it is a very uh, interesting way to frame your brand. So we'll go through that. The second thing is how to improve the brand experience for your customers. You want to make sure that when they're interacting with you, they always have the most positive experience, of course. And the last thing is to actually give you some steps and how do you get there. So uh, some of those will be very easy how to get there and some of them may just require a little bit more thinking. So let's keep going. Tip number one. So a brand is not what you think it is. And although I'm going to largely focus on the visual language and your, your, the identity of your brand today, because being from the graphic design world, I still think it's very important to make sure that everyone realizes a brand is so much bigger than what you see. It's actually this equation that's written right down here in the slide. So it's a promise plus the customer's experience plus what these customers tell their friends about your company or your product. And then it all comes into the summary of a brand. So everyone has heard this millions of times, but I'm going to say it. A brand is what people say when you're not in the room. Right? So that's it. You have to leave that impression. And it can definitely come from the visual cues we're just about to dive into, but it has to come for sure about all the types of things that you're building your brand on, the promises, again, the experiences, and it all culminates into one big picture. So I hope that makes sense because it is a very important point. Tip number two. Your brand needs a visual language, and this is exactly why you would seek out a professional like myself who's been doing this for 25 years, and as Christine said, it is my one and only love. Um, these signals that I develop for my clients on an ongoing basis, they are external, um, and they're obvious things like your logos. Uh, I guess I can participate in helping you even name your company and everything that goes along with the logo, the colors, the signage, the typefaces, the images, everything from A to Z and, and sometimes it requires a lot of big thinking because of the type of business you may be doing and other times it's just a lot of nitty-gritty little detailed things that also have to fall into place. So all your marketing and advertising they're also considered your brand signals. A couple more definitions that will quickly breeze by. So of course, we just talked about your, your logo. Many logos can survive with just a typeface. And we know many of these, like the IBMs of the world, they are largely only driven by their fonts. But it, it, I encourage a lot of small businesses to consider doing iconography, symbols, things that actually draw your eye into the logo so that it there leaves a lasting impression. Many of us, again, being small businesses, we have to stand out in this sort of sea of so many people perhaps doing the same thing or something that's similar to what we're doing. Uh, uh, sorry, um, an industry that may be similar. And this is so key that your brand has this touch point, that logo that, again, can stand out a little bit more than just a simple font, which, again, doesn't always do it justice for the, depending on the, the industry that you're in. Um, the identity, which of course is your visual identity or your brand language. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of that as I talk about how I came up with L7 Design and sort of my journey through there. And of course, that's all your visual components. And lastly, but not least, your personality. So the characteristics that customers actually experience when they're interacting with your brand. I think a lot of people forget that your brand um, is really a reflection of who you are. It, you have to be one with your brand. It's, it, there should be no separation. It shouldn't be, oh, I'm like this when I'm talking to someone, but when they see me in my 
work outfit or in my brand stance, then I'm like this. Well, it, that, there's kind of a disconnect there and people will start to see that disconnect. And we're going to talk a little further about that as well. So let's dive in. Everyone's still seeing my, my screen, correct? Perfect. Thank you, Janet. Love that thumbs up. And I, I wanted to walk you through the visual identity and my um, language evolution because it, it is an important thing for you to understand what goes into uh, creating a logo, what my process is, um, because I am very process driven and that's actually one of my brand words, which we'll get into it, like I said, a little later. So the first thing I would do for myself and do for clients is I start to really, I jot down lots of um, in, information that really ties to what my brand is going to represent, those keywords. And I start to research photos, iconography, symbols, anything that calls to me that attaches back to what I'm trying to achieve as a logo. Then I still drill down a little further and try to simplify and really focus on, you know, what, why are these icons speaking to me? What is this going to be in the end of the logo? And again, you can see there's several iterations. And then of course you have to start marrying it all together, right? You have to take, if you are considering an icon, you have to take, how do you combine that? How do you make the happy marriage between the typography and icons and have it all tied together so that it is very impactful and that it can be noticeable at any time of uh, viewing so whether it's you know on a business card where you reduce it so very small or is it a very large sign which again gives you a lot more real estate but it, it still has to be very impactful at a glance so after all those iterations that you just saw I'll just screen back there so there's this quite a lot of um, iterations I went through and of course you have to remember doing anything for yourself is very difficult it's actually more challenging than doing it for a client I find I can zero in much quicker for a client there's that whole, um, you're getting too, too close to, the, to yourself. But in the end, this is where I landed. And you've definitely seen my logo if you've gone to my website or if we've exchanged business cards at one of the meetups. Um, I really wanted to encompass my three brand words and I'll reveal mine right now. So it's creative, guide, and process. And the creative part, is clearly coming just from being a graphic designer and making sure that people do relate to me being a creative person that can help their creativity come out. And the guide was very important to me. And so L in itself means to, to guide. It is a guiding light. And of course, it's a female word in, in French. So there's that reference to myself being a female at the head of my company. Um, L7 is as a true representation of harmony. It's, it's the number of controlled perfection. And that's, of course, what I'm aiming for when I'm using all my processes is how to control things, how to bring harmony to something that might seem quite complicated to my clients, but is actually very simple if you follow the processes that I've devised. And I've talked all about my, my process on my website um, through a little four-step process called It Works. And I'll, and I'll leave that there for now. And of course, the last thing, the way I've tied in my icon of a crown, I wanted to give that uh, message to my uh, clients that uh, there's going to be a royal standard that they should expect of my design. It's going to be regal. It's going to be noble. It's going to be of the utmost that I can offer them. So when you come to me, that's what you should be expecting. And last but not least, just touching on the, the sevens and how I've used them as a as a way to a uh, mechanism to replace the L's so that there it does piggyback back onto the number seven and it supports it. It's an echo back to it. So it's a nice iconic reference. So I hope you can sort of appreciate that was a quick journey through it because again, I'm just watching time and I want to make sure we have enough time for our questions and go through a couple of exercises, but I hope you can appreciate what that took, how that usually goes. And again, time frame can vary from, um, person to person, company to company. It, it, it all depends on how, how much of the thinking that the client has thought through and how much I have to help them through it. So I'm ready to dive into our first exercise that I um, had Christine send to you. Is everybody ready for doing that? I'm just going to put so I can see more people. Would anybody like to um, offer up what they've described their brand in three words? Okay. 
It's going to go back to some other people so I can see everybody. Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to see you better. You can change the uh, grid. Yes, that's how you view it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I can see you better this way. Okay. Grid video. Okay, better. Would, there we go. Has anyone uh, had the time to do this exercise? Oh, did I change my screen? I did. Sorry, guys, we just pulled ahead for a second. I, I didn't leave um, some part. Okay. Uh, but I wouldn't mind to practice <laughs> if that's fine. Sorry, I'm just jumping ahead when I keep trying to click on different people. Um, okay, so it, would, would anybody say, and I'm sorry, your name was? Uh, this is Irina. Irina. Irina, so what would be one of your brand words? So um, I'm a mortgage agent. Yes, thank uh, so you. I was thinking that um, uh, the three words for the branding um, that should be associated with the branding should be reliable, trustworthy, and knowledgeable. Okay, great. When, when people talk to the mortgage agent, they need to feel confident. Yes. Um, to, to trust their financials to the person. Um, basically, the, the second, I think it's uh, the same. Um, the words you, you wish people would associate with your brand as yeah, reliable, trustworthy, and knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And um, how would you want your customers to talk about your brand when you leave the room? Um, so basically, it's very similar. They should feel confident that they can trust me uh, with their financials. And then um, they should feel um, um, more confident um, in, make, in making their financial choice. Or if I bring, some, if I bring up some points um, so they can learn something. Right, okay. And in terms of the brand's mission um, and personality, so providing some uh, financial knowledge so that people can make the right decision. So this is the mission. Yes, that sounds good. Uh, in terms of personality, um, bringing the quality uh, of the customer service and the knowledge like a combination i okay. i'm not sure if this is the right way. No, that's okay that's okay no you answered it the, the best way you know how so that's fine that's exactly the, the start of branding is to making making sure what you're trying to marry the two together what you're feeling in your in your mind is the way you can describe yourself like we said you yourself are is the brand so right so i i would i was wanting to um challenge you a little bit on number three i mean so how would you how would you know your brand that your actual customers feel that way about your brand? Is there an example of why they should trust you? Is it just because you say to them, I'm a mortgage person, trust me? Or is there an actual example of how you do what you do that shows the so, truth? So as I understand, if for example, they have some question or they have some situation and I provide them with the knowledge um in like in this area some uh, available advice and another point of course uh testimonials from the previous customers yes that's a, that's and that's a very good point i was just going to say if, if you can rely on what you've done in the past typically our experience does speak to a lot to our current position on what we do so that's mm -hmm. excellent and of course numbers are black and white so that's kind of nice that you can lead lean on the numbers a little bit right Right. Um, and I know the last one's a little bit tricky because uh, your mission and your personality can kind of be a little bit uh, of a, a stretch, meaning you set your mission and you just have to make sure your personality is not so different than the mission. So mm -hmm. a mission statement that can be very uh, bold and, you know, offer you this confidence and whatnot, but then your personality, maybe it's a little bit fun. 
and it doesn't necessarily match. So you just have to watch a little that it's okay to be fun. You don't have to change who you are, but you do have to make sure that that fun element is still brought on a professional level that people connect with you and think you're personable instead of being super fun. So you can always tweak it a little bit so that you can, um, again, exude the right kind of feelings you want people to have when they're interacting with you and that you're not pretending to be somebody else you're not, which we're going to dive into in, in, a, in a couple of minutes as well. Great. Thank you for the tips. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, yeah, so far. Is, is anybody want to share their other, uh, this exercise? go down and see if anybody is okay well why don't we move on then okay so well there, there'll be another exercise we'll talk about and and see how that also hit home with you guys um so the tip number three is that your brand needs a soul and what does that even really mean it means that when they look at your visual representations and everything you're saying about your brand they, they should actually feel something they should actually have an actual impression it's the vibe as i've put here in yellow of your, your soul the energy the realness the the thoughtfulness that goes beneath all these things that we're talking about the logos and the fonts and the tag taglines and the colors and the images all this has to have sort of this vibe so when you think of as i put fashion here because we're women so when you think of companies like versace blueberry sorry burberry excuse me um and um, <coughs> Louis Vuitton, you actually get uh, a true sense after over a period of time, they have definitely established the feeling and the vibe you want to get from them. You know there's a specific kind of quality you're going to get from them. You know the kind of fashion sense. It's not going to be entry-level fashion. It's going to have a very unique flair to it. It's going to have a very... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Excellent quality in the sense of the, you know, the garment itself. So you don't have to worry about wear and tear and all these kind of things. They all come through just by looking at their logo because they've established that over time and it, they've made enough of their promises over time that customers know they can keep coming back again and again and again. Number four uh, definitely ties into that as well. So it's all about being a, uh, a brand that delivers on these promises, right? So you have to be true and authentic, which is what we've been talking about a little bit on making sure your personality is not so different from your mission statement and making that mission statement not be so, so um, perhaps corporate sounding because everybody has mission statements that sometimes sound a little bit too stuffy instead of just really plain language that's real and means something about your company. Um, so again, you have to be authentic. And what it, that means is you just, you deliver every time and you have to do what it says it's gonna do. And I put a couple examples here. So if you were a lawyer, and maybe we have a lawyer with us tonight, you can honestly just say, I communicate in English. I communicate clearly, honestly, and I'm easy to understand. And there's no fine prints. So those are the promises that particular lawyer is making. There's no question in their client's mind what they're gonna be dealing with from when they deal with this, with this lawyer. And again, it's and the repetition, right? The, the, the lawyer has to be consistent. And here's an example. If you're a copywriter or someone more in the creative world, you can just simply say, you know, I say it with the right words. I, I'm going to be a good expression for you. I'm going to express things on your behalf. So those are some examples there of how you have to deliver on your promise. And number five. So repetition, brand repetition equals reputation. I've put this like a bit of an equation. I personally, on my everyday life, don't really love repetition. I'd rather it be, you know, a little bit, a little bit different every day, you know, kind of have a little bit of fun, especially because uh, some days I'm spending more time being mommy than anything else. And you have to kind of be creative that way. But really, we have to remember that repetition is such a foundational point to people remembering what you're trying to say and what you look like. So I've written down here that there's twofold. So first there's an operational aspect to why you want to be repetitive. When you repeat and you do it with consistency, people come to trust you, right? And they know what you sell. So I give an example of a Timmy's, Starbucks, McDonald's. You get exactly what you expect. There's no surprises at any location at any time. So even though we are all not the Starbucks of the world and the McDonald's of the world, 
we still have to be able to offer what we offer and be very repetitive, almost the broken record. But, you know, and, and that comes through as, as, as a positive because they just keep hearing the same message and seeing the same message. Very important to be um, that positive repetition to get, get your reputation. And of course, when you communicate, it, when we do repeat over and over again, the solutions that we provide, it actually comes out sorry, it needs to come out because we're not those big brands. It needs to be said that, that often and, and communicated that much to our community. Repetition um, only has positive things in this aspect. It's, it's, it's nothing that is meant to be um, a negative in any way, because again, we're leaving a lasting impression by being repetitious. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our exercise number two, where I asked you to roll up your sleeves at home and um, do this little repetition equals reputation exercise. And I'm going to ask if anybody can tell me the shortest way to say what you do. So I, I had said it, it's kind of like a tweet, so you can do it in 140 characters or less. Donna, would you like to try? Oh, you have no microphone on, no, no worries. No, I'm actually starting a new business. So okay. I'm just starting on my branding. If this was last year, I would have had it, but I'm working on something new right now. So this is Got my you. introductory starting. Got you, makes sense. <laughs> Perfect, well, you, you can just take this and run with it after, I hope so at least. I am going to. Good, 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 good. And I think, again, even if, if, if we're not sharing answers, I think it's still a valuable exercise to go through this together and, and, and understand why these things really hit home when we do them together, when we do the exercises, because they really force us to think through all the thought process before you get to creating your logo to make sure you have all these true foundational... Sorry, did someone say something? I have a question. Yes. Hi. Um, I have difficulty with these exercises because I teach art, I sell art, and I do commissions. So do I set up sort of branding for each one of those things? Or because my 140, for example, I, I went with teaching. I said, um, I teach drawing and painting, watercolor and acrylic, online and in person, one-on-one uh, -on -one or in a group. Doesn't sound very exciting right now. I realize that, but my no, my no. struggle is because I have sort of three different things. Um, I don't feel like I can include them all in one. So I don't know if I should try to do that or just kind of treat each one as a separate thing. Right. You know that's an excellent question, and it's Laurel. Is that right? Laurel. Yes. Yeah, Laurel. So. Um, that's a great question. I'm going to answer it now, no worries, uh, instead of getting to the end, because I think it does relate back to very nicely what, how you're trying to succinctly package everything up. So many times companies need to establish what I would call an umbrella logo or their main logo so that anything they want to have sit under the main representation being the person who's the owner, that company who has the main, again, it's all still art although it may have a little bit of some verticals coming out of it, there's, there is some merit in having the main, and then you can have the offshoots. You can always have secondary logos that tie into the first one, and the secondary logo can be more service or product driven. So as you said, you may not necessarily sell this way and teach that way and have you know, all these different arms. It may even grow for you, Laurel, quite frankly, right? You never know. We're all experiencing a new normal of how we want our businesses to thrive. So with that being said, it gives you an opportunity to, you know, still have everything sort of sit under this, this main first logo, first company, and have everything kind of then trickle down from there. It is difficult, I will say, to establish several brands and they look disconnected and then try to connect them back. That can be quite tricky. Um, I'm sure there are some that have done it with success, but they're probably not the smallest of companies. They're the mm -hmm. larger companies. And it, that takes a lot of um, time and energy and money and, you know, soaking up all your marketing dollars. And so you want to maximize the budget that you have, I'm sure. And you want to be able to um, have this sort of really concrete 
visual that they can relate to as your brand. And then like, as I said, you can always have offshoots and always have uh, sub brands really is another good word that I could use there. Does that make sense, Laura? Did I answer that yeah. well enough for now? Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks. How would you, um, can I pick on you one more time? Sure. <laughs> How did you, uh, I'm gonna jump down and say, what's the best way to explain it to a child? Um, I teach people how to draw and paint with watercolors and acrylic. Pretty basic. Now, I didn't include my commission side or my selling of art side. Um, I just sort of picked on the um, teaching side. Yes, and that's great because when you're explaining to a child, I would agree with you, you have to simplify as we know. And you have to really focus on the bigger picture. And sometimes when we do our branding, we get so martyred in the details, we forget that it's a bigger picture overview when you're going to go and design that logo. Everything cannot fit on the front cover, as we know, of a book, right? The, the story of the book is inside. It's when you get to know the brand. It's when you have the repetition of, of having the pleasure to work with them, buy from them, interact with them. So really, it's the synopsis is just kind of sits on the front cover, which is, again, uh, capturing all the main things we've talked about, whether it's personality, all these touch points we're, we're talking about. But you, you do have to find a way to simplify your brand so that it's not overly complicated when you do meet that person for the first time, like the last version at the Backyard Barbecue. I mean, honestly, are you going to go into a five minute discussion about what you do? No, you try to kind of keep it light and simple so that, you know, it's no different than networking. You have sort of your little elevator, you know, one, two sentences and it, it intrigues people enough to want to talk to you. So I think that's very important, again, how you position yourself, why you call your company a certain way and, uh, sorry, a certain name and how, again, it then translates into the visuals. It all does tie together. You just have to make sure we're not getting too, um, too wrapped up in the, in the details. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to continue because I'm just looking at the time. We're at seven, almost 7.40. And we're doing pretty good. Uh, I do apologize if my kids happen to walk in the door. I will do my best to shush them and get them up the stairs. But thank you, ladies, for understanding ahead of time. Um, my tip number six, we just have two tips to go. So your brand exists, exists sorry, to serve and not sell. This is a big one. And it's, again, not necessarily very visual. But it does translate for me, especially when I'm designing something for your business. I'm, I'm not really designing a logo that's supposed to be, you know, in your face, it's just pushy, 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 um, you know, colors that don't represent you. And they're maybe they're just over the top. And it's just, it can become very noisy, if I can say that. So really, if you connect that back to the original reasons of how we why we're writing about a brand before it gets to the visual language we're, we're, we're setting the foundation you have to tell the story from the buyer's side you have to show them how your product and service is there to support them it's, it's not about you it's about how you're going to serve them right so um i think we live in a world where we try a little too hard sometimes to sell ourselves a lot because you know again being small business we kind of feel that pressure but if we just demonstrate how our brand fits into their world and how it impacts them, then typically they are the right target audience that come to you. There is a whole piece on target audience that I haven't included on tonight's uh, workshop just because I do feel we're going to run out of time and I did want to give you some time to do those exercises. Um, as well as building a mission statement and a whole bunch of those kind of things as well. So those are always something if you were interested in, you can always ask me at a later date. And I'm more than happy to talk to you about those items as well. And this is the bonus tip, number seven. And of course, my favorite number will be the bonus tip. And it's that your brand is not for everyone. So, you know, we always want to say that we can serve everyone, you know, my, especially I would say, um, Irene, I'm going to pick on you for a second since we've already chatted as a, as a mortgage agent, you can definitely serve everyone. I would agree that it's possible for you to do that, but you have to ask yourself the question, is it really wise when you can actually identify your best customers and they may be widowers, they may be um, sorry, uh, empty nesters, they may be new home buyers, they may be a little bit of all in a basket because you get referrals, 
but really when you actually can zone hone in and discover who your prospects are then they typically are drawn to you they, they see the solution you're offering because they again they relate to the brands the, the three words that you're trying to exude there as you're talking and what your brand looks like visually it all is supposed to connect and form that story so you know we feel like we need to service everyone but we just we really can't not everyone is, is the right um, customer for us and sometimes really we just it's better to let it go than to try to reel them in because it'll probably be an uphill battle to to service them the whole way through until you get to the end right of, of that particular um, interaction I would say they also uh, typically you know it's the right person for you because they have the budget for your services right they're not asking you for um, a discount unless again you want to openly offer it and there are times where of course we we like to do that to have an incentive but it shouldn't be something we do on a regular basis i think we all can agree that that's not how a small business is going to run and stay profitable and be um uh, you know alive for the long hold so i wrote down in 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 yellow here to seek and serve them focus on those people alone they are your target market and as an example my target market is is really small businesses and although i can definitely service a variety of small businesses there are some verticals where i choose not to work with and um, just because i know that they don't share the same uh, value proposition as I do they and they may require a different kind of designer than I am so so you know again it's not about saying I wouldn't love to service um, them if they came to me as a referral it's just knowing that I'm not going to put the time and energy into seeking them out I'm really going to just set the stage for the small businesses that I know I can I can best help so I hope that makes sense so I do have a couple of exercises that I believe Christine sent to you at home I'm going to breeze by them I'm going to quickly um, land on here for a second and just saying that I recently was doing a little bit of um, social media posts. Um, I must say I need to improve that with my uh, limited time that I have. But I did put up this branding cheat sheet is what I called it. It's a top 10 checklist and it helps you to really get honest with yourself and say, am I standing behind my brand? Can I tick off these boxes? Can I say that I'm proud of my brand. Can I say that my personality is there? Do I speak to my target audience? I'm going to jump down, you know, mission statement. Do I have one? Like I said, I didn't include that slide, but I did share that once as well on social media the last couple months where I gave you the formula, a very simple formula on how to make your mission statement, um, your personal slogan. Do you actually say it in your conversations? I make it a point to say mine because mine is short. I encourage you to do things that are short again because they're memorable and you can repeat them so there's that whole repetition thing and it also helps you to connect it back to anything that's visual so that people are constantly making the connection it should almost be a bridge all the time and there shouldn't be you know any disconnect in the bridge between the visual and the promises and of course the visual identity we talk about the consistency and and marketing um, the, the last point being, you know, sell yourself as a complete branded package. That's what I would definitely encourage all small businesses to do. Try not to put all your eggs in one basket and say, you know, I'm only going to focus on doing a whole bunch of uh, social media because definitely it's important and definitely it's sort of the new way of promoting ourselves, it seems. Uh, but if you don't sell yourself as this branded package where when you actually meet someone in person and you don't have anything to exchange with them, uh, far more than your business card, then how, how is it that you're actually positioning yourself as a branded package? You have to be able to have anything that is digital work for you in print and vice versa. And even if you were going to be interviewed on a podcast, as an example, do you have the right messages? Can you convey what you're trying to say to this target market and even explain why does your logo look this way? Why did you choose that color palette? Stand behind everything in your package and say it with confidence and say it with that consistency we're talking about. So I'm hoping this, this checklist, which I, I again, I give, I've given to Christine, I'm sure she shared it with you, can help you uh, along the way there. So it's now uh, 7.45, I think we're doing well. It's, it's um, it's time for Q&A. If there's any additional questions at all, I'm happy to answer them. And then I do have a last slide where I'm happy to um, give you a little offer just for the mob group tonight. So I'm just gonna open it up. Does anybody have a question for me? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, 
Oh, sorry, Janet, there you are. Um, it's not really um, a question. It's more of a comment. Yes, uh, for please. me, this was very, very helpful. Um, oh, because the, the, very first, um, the very first question in our homework, I definitely got it wrong. So uh, I, I, I got it wrong. The, the first one definitely wrong, but I was dead on uh, the second question. But I, for me, I've never attended one of, these, um, one of these workshops and it was truly valuable. There was a lot of really, really good uh, takeaway and some really good stuff for me to, to try to focus on and try to work on myself and how I'm gonna be delivering this stuff, right? So it was very, very helpful. Thank you for that feedback. I'm glad it was. It's, it's hard yes. sometimes to, like I said, I had to quite frankly eliminate some stuff. This is um, one of those type of presentations where you, you do want to hone in on a specific things because it is important that you get the, the main parts over to yeah. you. So I'm glad you did. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. These, these, if you really dig deep, these, these questions you gave could take Hours, days, weeks. They could, they could, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I, I won't lie to you to say that I had given this uh, presentation, again, an elongated version to as a workshop before, and it was a full morning, and they told me, we need you for the afternoon. And I said, no, 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 we have to book that much time. So, yeah, it's because the exercises really do help you to identify where you want to go with your brand. And that's, the, like I said, that is the most important. And that's why I'm so process-driven. Before I even touch something that is a graphic that is going to be the look and feel, I really need all these pieces to be put together for me first. It's, it, it is a puzzle that when it comes together, it, it, the harmony is just so nice to then visually interpret that into your language. Hmm. Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, I have um, heard um, trains of thought where it's suggested that you brand like your company as like as your name, like just brand yourself. Okay. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that versus an actual company name? I'm sorry, who am I speaking with right now? Cindy. Cindy. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I, I lost the... I, I, okay. Because I have my screen on the elongated, <laughs> I keep losing you guys, even though I'm on the big grid. And I think I have to uh, exit my full screen presentation. So, so Cindy, um, yes, I, I am very keen on doing that exercise of helping the, the client yourself go through that... Uh, that dig deep and, and understand. So what's the benefit of branding as yourself versus branding as a name? And I'll give you an example where I thought it was definitely very advantageous for the person to be themselves. And um, it was um, a doctor, a naturopathic type of doctor. And she was very confused as to, you know what, I have this name I really like, but you know, I'm, I am, I am standing behind the name. And I said, well, why, why not just use your name? Because you want to establish some credibility. You're fairly young. So she was a very young doctor heading into this, um, you know, arena of so many other naturopaths. And although there's so much impact in a very uh, unique name, in a very um, descriptive name, I'm going to call it again, um, I really wanted to encourage her to support herself because she really needed to have a voice in, amongst sort of, again, this, this, this particular vertical of, of um, let's call it medicine, naturopathic. So that was one time where I really felt strongly that she needed to establish herself. Now, that's not always the case, Cindy, to be honest. And I think sometimes that's why we have to look at things from a branding perspective of what are you trying to position yourself as? What are your branding words? Who is your target market? Do they re re respond well? If it's, oh, I really want to get to know that person. I need to trust them. Um, I, I, I like the fact that I see their name. Or is it, you know what? I, I don't really need that. I just need to know that the product and the service is coming from this particular type of um, field or this particular type of arena. Um, does that help? I yeah, think, no, um, Cindy, um, were you given that advice because you're in network marketing and the person was suggesting that instead of being known as a Neora, like you, you're, you're, you separate yourself as Cindy, the, like, is that what it was? Is that why you were given um, that advice? It, yeah, like it was, it was through um, some online training, a couple different ones actually that I've, um, that I've watched that, um, 
they yeah they are all based around network marketing um and they it was kind of around the thought of like wanting people to trust you and identify who you are so i'm just going to share my own personal experience marta can agree oh yeah please do that'd be great christine um so i i was in direct sales for seven years the last company that I was with, um, it was great. I had a large team. Things were wonderful. And one day they shut their doors. <laughs> and I was branding myself as the company and not as myself. So moving then, transitioning to another MLM or direct sales company or whatever I wanted to do was much harder because all of the branding I had done was all related to that company and the jewelry opposed to me the businesswoman um so from that perspective i agree with what that person said but it's i don't think it's carte blanche i don't think you can say that about everyone so as marta said it's a very individualized process that i think people need to go through um so you don't wake up one day and everything you worked for is gone <laughs> yeah no that's a good point too Okay. Thank you, ladies. Mm -hmm. Thanks for asking, Cindy. Anyone else would like to ask a question or share feedback? Please do. I'm very open to feedback. Um, as I said, I've been spending so many of my hours mommying right now since March and who knows if it will continue. I haven't made my decision yet about back to school and uh, I'm sure you all are sharing my pain in, in this decision making, but um, I, I love feedback just because again, this is, this is how we grow and this is how we do refine our brand and, and refresh ourselves even right from getting feedback from other people. So. Um, I, I just wanted to say as somebody who does marketing as well, I think it's always beneficial to jump in and, you know, get another perspective. You can always learn stuff from other people and get a fresh way of looking not only at your business, but in my case, how I can help other businesses. So I really enjoyed getting your perspective um, on logos and branding and stuff. Because look, branding is branding is part of what I do, but I'm not a designer. And so, you know, I can look at a logo and say, I don't think that's going to work. It, but I can't look at a logo and say, you know, this is what you should be doing instead. Right. Thank you, Xanthi. Um, yeah, but as you said, you are in marketing, you're a writer. So you are so integral in this process of making sure that the promises that people are claiming, and again, they have to stick to them, yeah. right, are, are being clearly said, right? It's, it's yeah. that succinct, simple language, memorable language. So and you're honest. So, yes, exactly. The trueness, the realness. I couldn't, Authentic, I couldn't say that yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me today from your presentation, and I say it all the time, is that mm -hmm. just because you will sell to anyone doesn't mean you should market to everyone, <laughs> right. right? Many people are so afraid to niche. They're so afraid mm -hmm. to pick who their best, favorite, most ideal client is and market to them and speak to them. They're afraid that, oh, I'll well, miss a sale. But, uh, you know, uh, so if anyone has uh, not done that yet, then I think, uh, was it the second page, Marta, of the homework? There was uh, more questions for you to think yes, about how to yes. drill down a little bit further as yes. to who your favorite person, persons, people are to work with. <laughs> Yes, thanks for saying that, Christine. It's so true. And I, I, did, I didn't even touch on those because I know they're at-home exercises and I know yeah. for time's sake. But yes, please do take the time to do those, ladies, because as Janet, thank you for sharing. You may feel like, oh, I, you know, I got the homework wrong. It's not about right or wrong. It's just about uh, discovering that it wasn't the direction that was going to represent you the best way. So if you can rework, rewrite things, then it's, and it's, this is, a, as Christine said, when we first started, this is a great opportunity to refresh fresh ourselves ladies mm. i know quarantine hasn't been fun COVID is still not fun but it is giving us a little bit of pause time a bit of potential refresh time and you may not be ready to hit the trigger on refreshing yourself today or tomorrow but maybe as you work through this um, through this, the rest of the summer and into the fall you may find now is that it is the right time because this, this sort of new normal i think is going to be here for a little while as we said 
So, um, so yeah, I just, yes, thank you for mentioning that those exercises at home will really help you to niche mm -hmm. down. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone who registered for the class uh, received an email. That email did contain the two sheets from uh, what Marta went through during our session this evening and an additional three sheets. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't um, attach them today, Marta, as a PDF, but they all came across as JPEG files. So you could easily print those out, okay. um, definitely download them, review them. And I'm sure if you have any questions or thoughts or concerns that Marta would definitely be happy to, you know, address those via I'm not sure email or how sure. you'd like to uh, yeah no definitely email, email it's great it's great so Christine is it fair for me to wrap up with my last slide yes, yes and, uh, good before, before I go back to the slideshow could everyone I'd love to get a group photo if you're if you're okay with that love to get a group photo please so everyone if you could turn your cameras on and uh, I always say fluff up your hair pinch your cheeks mm -hmm. give me a great smile I am going to um, I'm going to say one, two, three, smile, <laughs> and then um, when I say that, uh, just look in the camera and give me a smile. So one, two, three, smile. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting. Yes, you can conclude and uh, proceed with your. Okay, so my workshop offered today, and this is just a special offer for um, the ladies who have participated. And again, Christine is going to share this recording, so I'm fine for anyone who couldn't make it to also basically available to the mob, is um, a 50% off branding buzz session. Now, what does that mean? On my website, I offer this as one of my most popular packages because it's a session where we get to look at all of your branding signals and I audit them across all your medias. So they, uh, and it's a 30 minute session. So it's, it's extensive enough for me to get a good um, glimpse, more than a glimpse, I should say, at all of your um, medias and how you're using your branding and how uh, can we improve that? Does it need to be improved? Is it excellent? Maybe your branding efforts are very excellent. So that, that, is uh, the, the offer for today. Um, and again, it is a 30 minute session. Then what, what you'll get out of that is I'll have a summary for you on what it is that we talk about in that 30 minute session. So you can expect a document back to you as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice chat. It's a, you telling me a little bit about what you've done with your brand. I take a look at everything. Once the 30 minutes wrap up, we'll be, I'll be able to digest it all and send you a document back that hopefully kind of sets you on your way. Excuse me for a second. Shh. Sorry about that, ladies. Uh, it's this is the uh, I have an open office so I need a door. <laughs> um, so yeah, once once I send you the document, then it gives you uh, a good summary of where you are now and maybe where you could head, and or at least some some recommendations that you can consider. So that's my offer to you tonight. Awesome, that's great. Thank you so much. That is done through the telephone or through through a Zoom call. Um, it can be either or. It can be either or. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. And how does one book that with you? You can uh, definitely, sorry, one second. I'm just moving away from this presentation. There we are. You can definitely reach out to me. Um, I do have a, um, a booking um, schedule on my uh, website right now. So you can book a call with me. Um, you may, I may have to contact you just because I need to revise my, my times right now on there. And maybe I'll, uh, that's what I'll do uh, tomorrow. I'll go in and I'll revise when I'm, I'm available. Okay. I haven't done that as of yet, but my, just, just through uh, COVID right now, my new work schedule is evenings only. Okay. So, so um, would it be fair at this point if I'm sending out a recap email to include your email address? Please do. Yeah, let's do that. Exactly, okay. Christina. And then I yeah. can always encourage, yeah, the booking after once okay. I get myself started. Thank you. <laughs> so are you saying I, we, we only have till tonight to respond to you, Marta, Marta to get No, that I'm just offer. offering it tonight. I actually, to be honest, Janet, I didn't put an expiry because I know that Christine wanted to put this out as a recording and okay. I wasn't sure of the time frame and when she'd be able to post it and I hadn't really asked her. So, um, I'm quite comfortable to say, you know, this this would be fine for this month of August. I'm pretty sure anyone interested would get back to me fairly quickly. It does, it's not the type of thing that people would sit on, I would say. And if they sit on it till September, they can reach out and we can have a conversation. But I, I would say this month. So yeah, it's it's um, a little bit more than tonight. But thanks for asking for sure. 
Okay. If anyone has any questions, I've just been monitoring the uh, chat box. There's a couple of um, comments in there. So um, just in response to what a few people have said, I don't know if you saw it, Marta. What I oh, will do is I will save the chat. Okay. If there was any, any questions that you wanted to address or look at, you could go back to that. Sometimes it's just nice afterwards to see feedback from folks because this is we're true. presenting, we're not always reading everything in detail. Yes, and I apologize because I could have been reading when I was listening to a little bit of quiet and I was thinking people are thinking I want to give you time I know what it's like to be put on the spot but but thank you yes I can see all the comments now that I'm focusing there yeah. and I would love to read it thank you Christine yeah. so I've already saved it and I'll send that to you okay all thank right. you if anyone has any questions uh, we're gonna sign off for the night but uh, I will send Marta's email um, along with the link to the recording and um, you know just follow up with her please note she is on um, evening hours only so you. you may not get an immediate response, um, but you will hear back from her. Um, thanks everyone um, for joining us tonight. I hope you got some golden nuggets out of this. I certainly did. And uh, it's always good to have reminders, no matter how much you hear this information, it's great to have reminders. And I loved how you walked us through your um, design at the beginning, all the iterations of the logos. It wasn't just like, here's two logos, pick one. I mean, you had like 45 or 50 um, there, which was, uh, which was great to see. So, um, and thank you so very much for your time, your effort, your energy putting into this. I know it's, uh, it's hard to squeeze everything in when we only have a few hours of uh, work time with children. And uh, that's it, everyone. That's a wrap for tonight. Um, again, if you have anything, please um, either follow up with Marta via email, or you can even post your questions inside the event uh, window and just make sure you either tag myself or Marta so that we, we see it. Okay, everyone? Thanks so much. Have a wonderful Thank evening. You, have Thank a you, great everyone. first week of August. Bye. Bye. Bye.